solution now is near the sympathizing Jesus. He speaks the drooping heart to cheer. Oh, hear the voice of Jesus. Sweet as not in seraph song, sweet as name on a mortal tongue, sweet as carol ever sung. Jesus blessed Jesus. All glory to the dying Lamb. I now believe in Jesus. I love the blessed Savior's name. I love the name of Jesus. Sweet as note in seraph song, sweet as name on mortal tongue, sweet as carol ever song. Jesus blessed Jesus. His name dispels my guilt and fear. No other name but Jesus. Oh, how my soul delights to hear the precious name of Jesus. Sweet as note in a seraph song, sweetest name on a mortal tongue, sweetest carol ever sung. Jesus blessed Jesus. And when he comes to bring the crown, the crown of life and glory, then by his side we will sit down and tell redemption's story. Sweetest note in a seraph song, sweetest name on a mortal tongue, sweetest carol ever song. Jesus blessed Jesus. You may be seated. All right. Good afternoon. Oh, what a blessing. It's This is our last meeting, but God has been good thus far. This is the time now we're going to open up for Do you guys want to do the questions first or do you want to do the presentation first? Huh? All right. We take a vote. Because there's a lot of people that have questions too, right? But presentations, raise your hand. Okay. All right. The majority of the people so far. And questions, raise your hand. It's okay, don't be shy. Questions, raise your hand. All right. Few questions, more presentations. Does anybody know what we're going to present on? Huh? Who is interested in this topic? I want to see hands. Home sanitarium. Okay. So a lot of you are interested in home sanitarium. Okay. What is a home sanitarium? 
<laughs> he said a sanitarium that's done at home. <laughs> that's a safe answer. Oh, very good. Let me ask this question. Who here has been to a, senate, a home sanitarium? Anybody here actually have been to a home sanitarium where people are treated for various issues? You have been? It's okay. Tell me. Two, three. Huh? Your brother run one in Jamaica. So one, two, three. Any, anybody else has been to a home sanitarium? All right. What, what do you need for a home sanitarium? What degree do you need? You said none. What degree do you need? Huh? Agriculture. Agriculture, okay. Experience, right? But not... Surely, you need to have a nurse degree or a doctor's degree, right? To run a sanitarium. No, you're going to be going against that. Oh. The registered one, I guess you have to have that type of training, but the home one, it's like taking care of your Yeah. That's right. Well, here's the answer. You don't need any degree to run a home sanitarium. Did you guys hear that? You don't need any degree. Many people I know who have a home sanitarium that is successful never obtain a degree. Now, if you have, by all means, a degree where you have a background in medical, that's a plus, but it's not necessary. All right? It's not necessary. So my TV is not working. I just got to turn it on, I guess. As more people are coming, looks like we have a full, full church almost. Uh, just need that TV on. We're going to start with prayer. Let's start with a word of prayer. All right, let us pray. Oh, I have the remote here. I, I'm good, Elder. All right, we're on. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this evening. Uh, as we come before your presence, we pray for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for what you are doing in this church. We pray for peace and that you would be with those who are watching online. Please grant us your spirit and give us the wisdom to know what to do. In Christ's name, amen. All right, so how to start your own, your home, it should say how to start your home sanitarium, but it says how to start your home, home sanitarium. How to start your home sanitarium. Uh, anybody have a clue on how to start your home sanitarium? Clean your house. Ah, what's your name, brother? He said, clean your house first. That's true. Why? Because cleanliness is next to godliness. You cannot have people come in your home and you're treating them for health and it's not clean. Right? What else? Amen. Under the guideline of the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. Very good. How else do you start your home sanitarium? You gotta have some basic exp uh, knowledge of natural remedies. Yeah, yeah. Basic knowledge of natural remedies. I agree. Do you have to be an expert? No. Right. Because, see, the medical missionary work is, to a large degree, a spiritual work. You understand? Because Councils on Health, page 28, says what? The inspiration of the Holy Spirit is the very best medicine for disease. So you just have to bring people under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And as you do that, you can begin to counsel them. You're just giving them basic instructions. You know, did you know that you should not eat 
at least five hours between meal? Did you know that you should not eat and drink at the same time? Do you know that it's wise to exercise? So you're, you're coming and you're setting up, thank you, sister, you're setting up a program for them. Understand? What most people who have come in the sanitarium are lacking and our past experience really is just a little bit of structure. Are you listening? So they're coming from you to learn some structure. That there is a set time you're going to set up for them to eat every day. That you're going to set a set time for them in the morning for worship. So basically, you're doing very little medical stuff, okay? Because the word medical missionary can be sometime uh, intimidating. But you're simply having them come in and you're setting up a schedule, whether it's three days or seven days, and you're saying, look, uh, at 5 o'clock, you're going to rise. 5.30, you're going to drink your warm lemon water in the morning. After that, we're going to have a little exercise. And that is nothing rigorous. You're just getting them to move 15 minutes. After that, we're going to have worship. After that, we're going to have breakfast. After that, we're going to go for a walk. You're just structuring something for them. And as they come and experience that, and every day, if you say breakfast is at 7, that breakfast must be ready at what time? 7. It's important. If you tell them lunch is at 2, what time lunch has to be ready? Every day. And you're doing that with them for seven days. In the midst of that, things will come up where they will, you will have something that just come out, out of nowhere. And a lot of times as you're working on their blood pressure, you're working on them, you're giving them water therapy, hydrotherapy, you're, you're uh, instructing them mostly on spiritual things. And the people that come in to, sometimes when we have our sanitarium work, they're not Adventists. And you have to be careful that you're not pushing too much on them. You know, but you still, Friday evening you open Sabbath. You say it's the Lord's Sabbath. And you teach them, whoa, what is that? I didn't know. Okay, well, this says here in the Bible. But you are primarily focusing on healing because many of them cannot understand uh, the, the weight of the truth until you have cleansed them, right? And so you have to show the most amount of love, the most amount of compassion. I can tell you sometimes you'll be annoyed because I've had people come and 2 a.m. I cannot sleep, they're waking you up. 2 a.m., I have a pain here. So you have to get up from your bed and go attend to them. You're doing the work of Christ. And through that experience that they are experiencing and that, uh, that compassion that you are showing them, they will see Christ through it. Amen? Amen. So questions. Yeah, I see some hands. And y'all can raise your hand and ask questions. This is more of a, and any question is open right now too. Yeah. Love and compassion. That's right. That. Yeah. Because if you don't, uh, you're not going to go to That's right. That's right. You don't want to beat them over the head without love and compassion. So, in other words, you don't want to say, you can't eat that and drink that at the same time. Or you, you have to, you know, tactfully, you know, sister, um, you came here for acid reflux, but did you know that you're not supposed to mix your food and your drink at the same time? Oh, really? I didn't know that. A lot of them will say that. Well, what happens? You have to explain. Well, because your stomach uses acid, right? And if you water down the acid, sometimes it's just not strong enough to break down the food. So you have to explain to them in a loving way because they're coming to learn. And I've had situations where the person who came, for instance, high blood pressure, we do everything and their blood pressure will not go down. So what do you do? And they say, it's not working. 
It's not working. I've had that happen many times. And then you just stop and you pray. You say, you know, this is a work that has to happen patiently. And many times before they leave, everything is under control. But there's always going to be, during that home cemetery session, a challenge. It's never going to be straight easy. Give it this and that's going to work. That's never going to happen that way. Expect challenges. And so that's where your life of prayer comes in. Because also you have to understand that these people are coming in and a lot of them are sick and they are looking for things like you're bringing them out into nature to go take them for a walk. And you're walking alongside them and you're talking to them. You're singing various things you're doing to help them spiritually in whatever their journey is. Okay, so I want to start with this quote that I began with last Sabbath. And if there's one thing I have really hammered home is this quote. As religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nation, right? Those who would stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable positions. For their own sake, they should, while they have opportunity, become what? Intelligent to the, in regard to disease, its causes, prevention, and cure. Okay? So we have a duty now to become intelligent in regards to disease, to prevention, and cure. And notice what it says. All those who do this will find what? A field of labor where? That means even in your own house. You'll find a field of labor. It says there will be suffering ones, plenty of them, who will need help, not only among those of our own faith, but largely among those who know not the truth. And I can tell you that's true because we've helped people. And in our past experience, I believe we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe about six or seven Adventists who have come through. But the majority of the people who have come through are non-Adventists. So do you see what this says here? There will be suffering ones, and plenty of them, who will need help, not only among those of our own faith, but largely among those who know not the truth. So the larger population is going to come from the world. And they're going to come to you so you can teach them about how they can change their lifestyle. And guess what? If you are going to be in a position of teaching them how to change their lifestyle, guess what you're going to have to do? Live it yourself. You have to live it yourself. So you can't come and tell them if they're having high cholesterol. By the way, side note. Because I get that a lot. People say, my bro brother, cholesterol is high. Especially here, right? And I don't know how I can paint this. But hear this, hear this, hear this out. There are rare situations where somebody with, who doesn't have, who is not on, who's on a plant-based diet will have a cholesterol issue. It happens. But the majority of people who have high cholesterol are on a meat diet. You, you, you understand that there is no cholesterol in anything that's plant-based. Right? Right? Yeah. Right? Avocado. yeah. What about avocado? No cholesterol in avocado. No cholesterol. No cholesterol. No. It has good, healthy fats. Yes. Cholesterol, and by the way, oh man, I just came to my mind. I'll write, write this down. Write this down. Everybody take out your pen. Write this down. I wanted to show the movie tonight, but that's not going to happen. Maybe on your bus ride tomorrow, you can put on your earphones and watch and listen to this movie. It's not a movie. It's a documentary. It's called What the Health? What the Health? What the Health? You can get it on YouTube or on Netflix. And it's a documentary about several doctors, about 10 of them, following people with issues like heart failure, cholesterol issue, 
blood pressure issue, cancer. And within two weeks of taking him off the meat diet, putting him on a plant diet, on the documentary, difference, huge difference. Many of them are healed and come off all their medications. What the health? Just watch it. It's so, it's so interesting. And it's not done in a way that you will not understand. And if we had time, I would make us sit here and watch it tonight. But we're not going to have time, okay? So cholesterol only comes from animal-based foods. Butter. Eggs. One egg has 180-something milligrams of cholesterol. And if you have heart issues already, do you know how much cholesterol you are allowed a day? About 200 milligrams. One egg has 180 something. Okay? But they will say the egg also has something in it that will help to wash that out. You know, they come up with a lot of things. But anyways, the point of it is this. Cholesterol only comes from animal-based foods. You're beating up the poor oxtail again. You know, you know why I beat up oxtail so much? That was my favorite. <laughs> oxtail, rice and peas, and cabbage. But I just love, I, that was my favorite. So I beat it up so much. So in fish also, you find a high amount of cholesterol which people don't realize that. And when you watch the documentary, you will listen to those doctors saying that. So if you come off the animal-based foods, brethren, it won't be long till your cholesterol level goes normal. Considering you're exercising. And remember, too, as you do that, what you can do to, 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 to supplement is vitamin K. Also, vitamin K is very good for cleaning and removing cholesterol. And vitamin K also helps to remove plaque from your arteries, which is often a cholesterol buildup and calcium mixed up, right? Plaque, vitamin K is, comes from what? Dark leafy greens. Dark leafy greens. Kale. Spinach. Uh, Kalalu, but not boiled down, steamed. Dark leafy greens will clean your arteries. Uh, chlorophyll, which comes from the plants. You take your chlorophyll, and chlorophyll is a byproduct of the sun hitting the plants. You know when there's no sun, if you go up north, the plants turn white color? Brown. Yellow, brown, because there's no chlorophyll. So you take dark leafy green, which is vitamin K, and you can clean your arteries out. Okay? So cholesterol only comes from animal-based foods. There is also two cholesterol. You have dietary cholesterol, and you have serum cholesterol, which your body produces naturally. The liver produces it. And when you take a medication like a statin drug, okay, Statins are not very good medications because those statins, uh, they really hinder the liver's natural process. And a lot of people on statins end up with issues with their mentation, their memory, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, gout. I'm not saying it's directly causing it, but, and, and guess what? It's because the brain fuels on what kind of fuel? What kind of fuel, fuel feeds the brain? Fats. Yeah, good fats. Which your body uses cholesterol also to make hormones. That's what your sperm count is made with. And all of these bases are made with cholesterol. So you need cholesterol, but you don't necessarily need the animal-based cholesterol. Your body will be just fine making its own. The liver does that. Yes. Yeah, use the mic so people online. I just use my, 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 my voice. Well, people online can hear it though. Yeah, yeah. 
Would you say that it's better to make your own vegetarian food as opposed to buying it store bought because it has cholesterol and some of that store bought stuff? Absolutely, or or even uh, it has a lot of it has what's called preservatives, preservatives and additives. It is always better to make your own f- from scratch, always, and it's easy to make your own wraps, to make your own pizza from scratch. It's always better. You know what's in it. It's fresh, right? Uh, and and it, it's always better. So, so I wanted to just touch that. Yes. Yeah, use the mic, please. Thank you. Does vitamin K promote clotting, blood clot? Uh, good question. Very good question. If you are on Coumadin, which is a, what do you call that? Terminal, blood thinner. Thank you. If you are on Coumadin, uh, let's say when, if your INR, which is uh, the standard that they use to measure whether or not your blood is thin enough. Uh, I remember as a nurse, uh, if, my, if the INR was a certain level, I believe it was 10 and up, uh, you would order vitamin K, which would in, in turn coagulate the blood and cause the blood to be less thin. So to answer your question, yes, but it's more complicated than that. Because the vitamin K that they give is synthetic, Versus God's vitamin K, that is a natural form that comes from the plants. Uh, again, if you are drinking enough water, remember I said the number one blood thinner is water. If you're drinking enough water and you're eating properly, uh, I, I don't think that the advice that they give is don't eat any dark greens is wise at all, which is what they say. It is not wise. They, if you are on Coumadin, a lot of times the, they will discourage you from eating any dark greens. So, oh, any little dark You know how much it would take to really... To, I had a doctor I used to work with. He was a, uh, a nephrologist. He was one of the world-renowned nephrologists. He taught at Albany Medical Center in New York, which is one of the greatest medical colleges. And, you know, as nurses, sometimes we tend to say things. Like, we I remember there was a patient that was a kidney patient, and I was... Ex- uh, I was educating the patient on potassium. And, you know, they would say, you cannot have any bananas. And one day he walked past the room and he says, with this accent, he said, what are you telling my patients? He said, do you know how many bananas you would eat, you would have to eat to raise your potassium by 0.1? He said, don't, don't tell my patient that foolishness. They can have the bananas just in moderation. So what they will tell you is you can't have any dark greens because you're on Coumadin. You you can have it in moderation because God has created these things for us. And again, you keep yourself hydrated enough, you should be okay. All right? I just wanted to talk about that cholesterol. Yes, there's another question. Yes. Okay, you you need the mic. Sorry to stray off the point but recently I started to have really bad acid reflux mm-hmm. is there anything do you what do you recommend to get rid of it and how long does it take okay very good question acid reflux is a common issue with a lot of people rarely is it caused by an overabundance of acid a lot of times you will find that It is happening because you're not properly balancing your meals, meaning giving time for your food to digest. How long between meals? At least, at least four hours. Five is better with an hour for the stomach to rest. Okay? You will find when you do that, a lot of times your acid reflex will go away. Secondly, Secondly, not eating too late. So you should not go to bed at least how many hours before you eat? You should give yourself at least four hours. And then you can cut back on some acidic-based foods, right? Such as, if I know I have acid reflux, I'm not going to have my, my dinner be with a bunch of tomato sauce. Because that's a very acidic kind of food, right? So... The, big, the best thing for acid reflux is eating early. 
having your lunch, your, I mean your main breakfast meal around 7, a big meal. Remember I said the main meal of the day, and then your dinner around 3, 4 o'clock, and then that's it, you're done. If you're going to have a third meal, let it be what? Light. Let me tell you something. Where does that principle come from? Three meals, two meals a day. It comes from the Bible. First Kings chapter 17. The ravens brought Elijah bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening. And the Bible says, and he drank of the brook. Had water in between. That's it. The manna fell how many times? Morning and evening. These are biblical principles. They're not something that Ellen White made up. They find their origin in the word of God. God fed the children of Israel twice a day. Because if God saw the need for them to be fed more than that, he would have done it. He sent Elijah food twice a day, morning and evening. So a lot of times if you see that you follow that principle, your acid reflex will go away. However, some people can still have it. So then in that case, I would use two herbs that are great for acid reflux. Number one is marshmallow root. And number two, it's slippery elm. Those two herbs will solve your problem with prayer. Yes. I was trying to do the home sanitarium, but the questions are coming. All right, so the, it's okay. the last question that was raised uh, concerning acid reflux. Yeah. And in most cases, it is said that you have too much acid. Mm -hmm. Now, over the years, because I've had problem with this problem. That can happen, and but it's rare. I, I, I've taken Miss Mactricil from the hospital. I have taken uh, Melox, Mylanta, yeah. and, and, the, and the whole works. Yes. And I've been on it for time. Mm-hmm. Right? In later times, we used to take Tums mm -hmm. and, and other stuff. Yes. In recent times, I've learned that in most cases, it's, you have too little acid. Mm -hmm. And so that is your problem. That's true, yes. And I have learned to take a little lemon juice. Mm. And that is, my, that, that is the answer to my problem. So in Does most you cases, that? you have too little. And uh, when you take this stuff, like Tom's is something that it, is, it, it's not good. is promoted and it's not good. Yeah. Right? And it also reduces the calcium. That's right. In your blood. In yeah, a, my, my grandmother used to, I remember in Haiti, my grandmother used to drink Tom's like water. That was, uh, it was actually, it was called Malox. <laughs> used to drink it, the little white. And one day I taste that thing. I said, it tastes like toothpaste. <laughs> but yeah, that's, he's right. So lemon, a little lemon water. But if you, if you cut down on, again, your snacking, right? Think about it. Every time you snack, what are you doing? You're restarting the digestive process all over again. And the digestive process takes four to five hours. So when you go and you take a snack, servant of the Lord says not one peanut should be introduced between meals. Plain water, that's it. So when you take a snack, you're restarting it because digestion starts at what part of the, play, uh, what part of the body? The mouth. The mouth releases, releases certain enzymes, breaks down starch. The moment you put something in there, you start digestion again. So... Why do people snack is the, real, is the bigger question. You know why? Because they're not eating properly to begin with. Because if you are eating a complete meal, which should consist of what? Carbohydrates, proteins, nuts, seeds, fruits, vegetables, or salad. This is what your plate should consist of. And your nuts should be what? Raw. Handful of nuts. Handful of seeds. 
a little carbohydrate, a generous amount of protein, which can come from your beans, black beans, red beans, uh, legumes, lentils, right? And if you eat like this and your grain is whole foods, now, meaning the rice is not white rice, right? If you eat like this, when people come to our place or even our restaurant, when you eat, you will be full for five hours. You're not going to think about eating because you will have completely nourished yourself. You do understand that the word malnourishment does not only apply to some skinny kid in Africa. You can be 500 pounds and be malnourished. Simply means you're not getting the proper nourishment. So if you're eating right, you're not going to need have a need for snacking in between. And your acid level should, for the most part, in most cases, be under control because you're not snacking constantly. Okay? Any other questions? Well, I'm giving examples of proteins. Black beans would be a good source. Uh, soybeans or tofu. Uh, red beans. Those are all uh, sources of proteins. Uh, the green lima bean is okay, but that's it, it doesn't have as much proteins in it that you would find in, let's say, kidney beans. That's full of good proteins. And, you know, another thing you can do is to, when you cook your, let's say you do a sauce, right? You can actually add nuts to it. You know that, right? You can put cashews in your sauce. Haitians are good for that. When, when, you have, when you have a Haitian sauce, you know, Haitian food is not complete without sauce. <laughs> she knows. All right? You can do a nice sauce of a pat tomate, which is, uh, which is uh, tomato paste. Yeah, like a gravy. Well, you guys call it gravy, we call it sauce. Okay, all right. Peppers. Peppers, everything. And then you can take cashews and you put it in there and you can put that over your rice. She haven't cooked for you that yet? You haven't? Oh, you need to make her cook that for you next Sabbath. <laughs> also, eggplants, what we call legume, right? Eggplants, you could chop your carrots. You know, if you haven't had Haitian legume or eggplants, you haven't had eggplants. You got to get her to cook that for you, too. <laughs> She's been hiding out on you, holding out. Okay? Eggplants are like meat. I'm telling you, eat eggplant is like you're eating meat. You, it's going to keep you. It's going to keep you full. And that's what, I think that's what a lot of people are lacking, that they want this extra fullness that they get from eating the meat. Well, those are the things that are going to do it. Um, personally, I don't have any issue with tofu. I know a lot of people say tofu is bad. That's not true. It's come from the soybeans, and if you get an organic non-GMO tofu, you're good to go. It's, it's, in a way, it's processed, but it's probably... If you read the label on the tofu, it's, it's pretty simple. So there are some processed things that are decent. And I know we also, it's easy to make tofu as well. Very easy. So you can learn to make your own almond milk. You can learn to make your own cashew milk. So these are the things that's going to come in handy as you do your lifestyle center because, or your sanitarium. Because you can't invite those people over your sanitarium and you're giving them some processed things from Walmart. They want to see something original, which is what I will show you a little bit of, okay? They want original. Keep in mind, as you are doing your home sanitarium, it is also a way for you to be self-supportive. What I recommend is you don't charge as much. You don't charge as much as a lot of these other sanitariums do because ultimately the Lord will still bless. And always remember Never turn people away because they say they don't have money. Figure out a way you can work it out for them. Can we do a plan? And I always tell them before they come, okay, you know, you, you need to make sure the person is paying. If they can afford it, many can afford it. If they can afford it, by all means, they need to pay. 
You make, them, you make sure they pay and they reserve their spot first. And you can start with one room in your house. One room. You can even start among your own church members. And God will bless. He really will. Okay? And when we first started to do this work, we had no experience. <laughs> None. This is the thing that I'm telling you. How do you learn, get experience as a medical missionary? One of the major mistakes we make in the church, and I see it all the time, we invite speaker after speaker after speaker. But you know what we don't do? We don't apply the information and the knowledge. And then when we don't apply it, guess what happened? You lose it. So we decided, you know what, all this thing I'm hearing about, we're going to apply it. When I first started this work, I only knew one herb and, and something else was charcoal. You ever hear people come do mission, medical missionary work and all they talk about is charcoal? You see, I even mentioned charcoal. Because I have practically learned all the herbs, I'm still learning, right, that I can go beyond charcoal. Medical missionary work is not just about charcoal. Don't get me wrong, charcoal is powerful. But you got to go beyond charcoal. So how do you learn? You start practicing. A sister, and somebody, when you leave here today, one of your family members is going to say, sis, or auntie, or so-and-so, I got this pain, or I got this going on. That's your cue. And you're going to say, okay, wait a minute. I think I can help. And you're going to start giving them things. And you know what's going to happen? They're going to call you next day and say, you know what? It went away. It helped. And you're gonna, that's going to retain in your memory all the time now that this is what I need to do. So speaking of home sanitarium, there's some books you're going to need. And I'm going to give you the list of books. Okay. First of all, your first textbook is what? The Bible. Who said that? That's your first textbook. Your first textbook is the Bible. The second textbook you're going to need, and just start reading it little by little. It's Ministry of Healing. Okay? Ministry of Healing. Second textbook. And then I would go with something that's very common among Adventists. Most Adventists have one on their shelf, never open. Natural Remedies Encyclopedia. Who has one of these books? Then you're a medical missionary. Natural Remedies Encyclopedia. Everything you need. Right now, if you go look, diabetes, kidney disease, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, you go there, it will tell you what to avoid, what not to eat, what to drink, what herb to take, what remedy to do. This is about $135, but you can get it on Amazon for $60. Every home should have one of these books. Natural Remedies Encyclopedia. It's written by a few doctors within the Adventist church. All natural. You can start with this book alone. You're good to go. Natural Remedies Encyclopedia. Uh, the author is uh, Vince Farrell and Harold Churn. She's an MD, a medical doctor within the Adventist church. And this has over 11,000 inexpensive home remedies. Over 11,000. <laughs> It covers 730 diseases and disorders. So you must have, you must have this book, okay? Then I would recommend Councils on Diets and Foods. You must have that and you must read that because this will tell you how to combine foods. It talks about the diet in pregnancy. Did you know? That there is a chapter that tells us why, how we should eat when we are pregnant. Why? Not only you are feeding for two people, but the diet of the mother affects the character of the children. Listen to me. 
You know what they say? They say, oh, she's pregnant. Eat whatever you want. That is not biblical counsel. And every child that was important in the Bible, God sent an angel to give him a diet. John the Baptist. Samson. Jesus. Follow these points. And in this book, it talks about the diet every mom should have in pregnancy. And to some degree, a lot of diseases that children are born with, they are passed down because of the intemperance of the mother. It's a harsh reality, but it's the truth. So the diet, uh, the councils on diets and foods will talk about things like, for instance, milk and sugar. Do you know milk and sugar is alcohol? Do you know that? Whenever you have milk that is sweetened, it's alcohol. It ferments. Right here it says, far too much sugar is ordinarily used in food. Cakes, sweet puddings, pastries, jellies, jams are active causes of indigestion. Especially harmful are the custards, the puddings, in which milk, eggs, and sugar are the chief ingredients. The free use of milk and sugar taken together should be avoided. You see that? Some use milk in a large amount, in a large amount of sugar on mush, thinking that they are carrying on out health reform. But the sugar and the milk combined are liable to cause fermentation in the stomach and are thus harmful. That's Councils on Diets and Foods, page 113. So you'll find little councils in there about that. In her time period, she was talking about animal milk. But even the almond milk, when you go buy the almond milk, you should read the back of it and it should say, no added sugar. Because what is sugar? Sugar, it should not be consumed because there's counsel that tells us against using sugar. All right? One serving of sugar, listen to me carefully, suppresses your immune system for up to five hours. Yes. It suppresses your immune system. This is why cancer cells uses sugar 11 times more than other cells. Right? So what kind of sweetener should you be using? Honey. Maple. Dates. Who said dates? Right there. Dates. You guys know what dates are? Okay. The natural sugars. The white sugar and even the brown sugar is no good. Oh, yeah, dates are 100 times better. They're super healthy. They are natural. They come from the hand of the creator. The other sugar is extracted. So what is, what is missing? The fiber. Okay. So those natural sugars should be used. So you need this book for your home sanitarium. All right. Councils on diets and foods. Yes. Uh, blackstrap molasses is good, but you should always avoid anything that's processed. So if it says cane sugar, it's essentially processed. If you eat the sugar cane by itself, that's better, right? Anything that's unnatural, you should try to avoid it. Because, you know, God put the sugar in the cane, in the sugar cane. But men take it out and pick it to something else. You see that? So it's unnatural. So, Councils on Diets and Foods is a book I recommend. And for your juices, okay? Healthy Juices by Dr. George uh, uh, Pimplona Roger. This, any kind of ailment you have, you look at it, it will tell you what kind of juice you need to make to help it. Diabetes, high blood pressure, you name it. So, for instance, I'm going to look up asthma. Who has asthma? 
Okay, I'm going to give you an asthma juice right now. For asthma, they're recommending uh, one medium banana. It can be frozen. One kiwi. One cup of apple juice. One can of homemade, uh, or it can be homemade or canned, half a cup of water. And you blend that, and they tell you exactly what in it that's going to help. It has anti-allergic properties, it has pictorial properties, and anti-asthmatic properties. Yes. Lemon water can help as well, but... You know, this book just gives you various, you know, it gives you different sources of things that you can do or different uh, options, if you will. Oh, Mike, Mike, please. Yes, yes. Is there an alternative to the kiwi? So the kiwi, I'm assuming, if I look at it, I'm just guessing it's probably for vitamin C. Kiwi has a high form of vitamin C. So if you can't have kiwi, I would say guava would work. Guava. Or kamu kamu. Kamu kamu is the fruit that has probably one of the highest contents of vitamin C. It's, it, it comes from the, uh, the Amazon rainforest. So in places like um, Brazil, you'll be able to find it. And here you can get it in powder form. And one teaspoon has 687 milligrams of vitamin C or something like that, roughly. Huh? There's a company named TerraSoul. TerraSoul online. They're out of Texas. They make nice organic camu camu powder. But you can get it on Amazon. Get anything on Amazon. I'm not to promote Amazon because they're... We need a church... Health food store with these things. I'll give you guys a list of what you need. Amen. The author of the book is Dr. George uh, D. P. Uh, uh, Pamplona Roger. He's a, he's a doctor at Loma Linda. Okay. So for instance, let me give you another one. All right. This is for the men. Let me see what I can find. Oh, type 2 diabetes. There we go. Type 2 diabetes. Here's a, re here's a juice remedy or a smoothie. One cup of kale, chopped kale, one cup of spinach, one broccoli, one, two tablespoons of lemon juice, and you prepare that in a smoothie. It is anti-diabetic, antioxidant. Mineralizes, it's alkaline. Are you trying to juice that or is that a smoothie? This one is a smoothie. So there's different options for juices and smoothie. Because they added an apple to it too, I would juice it. Okay. If it's because here there's some things that I don't necessarily 100% agree with. You understand why you are going to juice fruits and vegetables, but you can't blend them, right? Do you understand? Okay, so do you understand? So again, in Councils on Diets and Foods, I don't have the page with me, it talks about that we should never mix fruits and vegetables because your body uses different enzymes to digest fruits versus what it uses to digest vegetables. So because of that, in order to consume it, you need to remove the fiber. When you juice... You can mix the fruit and vegetable together because the fiber is removed. That's why your juicer spit out the pulp. No more fiber, so it doesn't need to digest. You understand? Well, you can blend it, but just don't blend the fruit and vegetable together, but juice the vegetable and the fruit together. Because when you blend something, all the fiber is in it. If I take something that's blended and I take a strainer and I strain it and I add water, you're going to see all the fiber remain in the strainer. But if I juice it, all that fiber is coming out, so therefore I can consume it. Because you don't want to mix fruits and veggies together because different enzymes breaks down different. Right. And if you do that, it also ferments.
Just like the sugar in the milk. That's why you don't want to do it. You guys understand why it's not good to eat fermented things, right? It's alcohol, like vinegar, for example. When Jesus was offered vinegar at the cross, what did he say? He denied it. Because vinegar would have altered his mindset. It's no different than the alcohol. Yeah, I saw another hand. Wait, wait for the microphone. Wait for the microphone. We have... I believe it was kale, spinach, broccoli, lemon, and if you're going to juice it, you can add an apple. Yes. Does it require a permit to operate a sanitarium? Good question. No, because you have to refrain from doing anything medical in there. Which means, for instance, you can't draw labs, okay? You can't draw somebody labs. You can't do anything like that would require a medical license. So you basically say you are a lifestyle center. You understand? Right. Not a medical center. In other words, you're saying I'm training people on how to change their lifestyle, like a lifestyle coach. You understand? Yes. So... In Arkansas, when we do it, that's, that's, that's not an issue. Um, we don't have to have a medical license necessarily to do it. Some sanitariums have a doctor that is on staff. And by all means, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay? We don't want to, listen, I, I don't want people to walk away here thinking that we're bashing doctors or nurses. That is not the case. We're just telling them to incorporate more natural in dealing with their patients to tell them more about their, the diet change and not just be ready to quickly just prescribe medications. Nothing wrong with doctors. We need our doctors, and you guys need to utilize the doctors you have here yes. to help you incorporate these things, okay? So I want to just be, clarify that. I have nothing against doctors. There's a time and a place for doctors. There's a time and a place to go to the hospital if you need be. All right? We have to be balanced. Yes. But... At the same time, we need to look at what, what's the alternative. How else can I treat my blood pressure other than remaining on lisinopril for 30 years? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. If you're taking a medication for 30 years, it's not working. Amen. Does that make sense? But by all means, we need our doctors. A lot of doctors can help. Sister White writes a lot about what doctors and nurses can do because they have the, they have the uh, advanced knowledge. They can help. So we need our doctors. We're not trying to shoot them off here and, and, and trying to tell them they're not important. They are. I know some wonderful consecrated doctors who left their occupation in order to do this work. And I'm sure a few of them have come here, right? Right? So we need the doctors. Question. Microphone right there. Thank you. And I'm going to get more into I'm going to show you guys more about the home sanitarium. So healthcare in the United States has caught on that um, the, the disease now really begins in the gut. Amen. There is a lot of information. That's right out there regarding this and in our industry, uh, we're now um, teaching our, our patients about preventative measures. But one of the things that is being pushed is fermented food. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, ma'am. Kimchi. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Let me ma get you the list. Praise God. Sauerkraut, yes. kombucha, kimchi, tempeh, kefir, yogurt, yeah. miso, and natto. For gut repair, yeah. For gut repair, but you just shared. Mm -hmm that it is not good for us to eat fermented yep. food. Yes. So how would you answer this? Very, okay, so <laughs> that's a good question. Well, we have to go to the Bible and the spirit of prophecy and, and, and reference that. But I deal with a lot of people who come to our restaurant or lifestyle center when we have it, portable lifestyle center, because we don't have a physical one uh, yet. This is something we're praying about, and you guys can pray for us for that too. Okay. They say, well, you know, there's also the mushroom kick. 
You do understand there's two kind of healing. There's many forms of healing, I beg your pardon. There's many forms of, form of healing, but the servant of the Lord said there's only one that heaven approve. There's only one that heaven approve. These people are pushing mushrooms. They'll say there's a hundred different kinds of mushroom. If you have cancer, take this mushroom and that mushroom. Mushroom, number one, is a fungus. Mushrooms do not go through the process of photosynthesis. That's why they're not green. They, mushroom grow anywhere where it's dark. Their job is like the pig. Okay? It's to clean. My boat. Famous Haitian, don't you know about that? But hold on. Think about this. No, let me just listen. And I will have to say this. This is an opinion. Okay? This is an opinion. I differentiate between opinion and inspired counsel. All right? I'm just using common sense. When I went to school and I was taking biology, I remember my teacher, before I even was in the church, used to say, mushrooms is a decomposer. It's a fungus. And I'm just thinking, wow. It doesn't have a venous system like the other plants. In other words, it has like no root system. The root system of the tree of the plant is to help to filter and to obtain things that are necessary and things that are poisonous to stay out. Mushrooms don't have that, okay? So, <laughs> I'm sorry. And actually, Dr. Kellogg, Dr. Kellogg, I don't have the quote with me. Anybody know Dr. Kellogg? Yes. Before he apostatized, he advised against eating mushroom. That's the closest counsel I have on it. All right? So it is a decomposer. It is a fungus. It doesn't go through photosynthesis. That's why it's not green like other vegetables. So technically, it's not a vegetable, even though they say it is. All right? That's one. And you find me a mushroom that they say is good for cancer that has 100 properties in it, I'll find you a green plant that has 1,000 properties that the mushroom has. Does the pig has good, have good properties in it? Yes. It's still a pig. There's good properties in the pig. Doesn't mean you eat it. Okay? So... Back to the kimchi. Back to the kimchi. In order to fix your gut health, you do it with nice green alkaline juices. That is just as good to do it. There's another thing they're pushing. Turmeric and black pepper. You heard that one? Yes. Turmeric and black pepper. They say you cannot activate the turmeric unless you mix it with black pepper. But in councils and diets and foods, what does it say about black pepper? We should not eat it. Yeah. Do you didn't know that? I'm stepping on toes now. What is the good pepper we should eat? Cayenne pepper. Black pepper is, is, is toxic to the brain. It's toxic to the gut. In fact, even the world naturalists are telling you that black pepper puts holes in the gut. On the other hand, cayenne pepper fixes them. Cayenne pepper is a stimu it stimulates the blood. It fixes uh, people who have issues in the brain, such as brain bleeds, the gut, and all of that. So uh, one day I was doing research on this information. I said, Lord, every, every article I went and found, all of it says turmeric, black pepper, turmeric, black pepper. I said, Lord, I pray. I said, there must be evidence because I cannot believe you're telling me to not eat something. And everything I'm seeing on it is saying that I should have it. And I found an article, a study, that says turmeric can be activated by heat. Not necessarily just black pepper. So ginger and cayenne pepper can activate turmeric. You just need heat. Okay? 
So all, so basically, to, to open up, to finish with my initial point, what I said was, there is a lot of methods of healing, but there's only one that, met, that heaven's approved. Okay? And that one method of healing that heaven approved is the one that is found in the Bible in the spirit of prophecy. So for instance, uh, God talks about whole, making us whole. And the world has something called holistic. It's a mistake. If we put a flyer out, it should not say holistic with an H. That's new age. You do understand, if you go to the new age, you are practicing witchcraft, they will give you the same prescription for herbs that anybody else can give. They can give you the same thing. But what element they don't have in their practice, they don't have God and the Holy Spirit. So we say holistic, W-H-O-L-I-S-T-I-C, holistic, and it's in the Bible. God wants to make you whole. So the holistic without the W is not God's holistic. That's the new ager holistic. So don't use that terminology. Another thing while I'm on, I'm on that point, we are not vegans. Veganism is a religion. Did you hear that? Veganism, vegans drink alcohol, and vegans do not wear leather. Vegans also won't eat honey. And the Bible says, eat thou honey because it's good. We are health reformers. Now, for the sake of people not understanding, we say, well, I'm on a vegan diet. But veganism is a religion. It's really a new age religion. They practice a lot of bad stuff. And some vegans are more unhealthy than people who eat meat. A lot of their stuff is processed, right? So there's a few things that we need to correct. I saw some hands up. Okay, right there, and then right there, and then in the back. Thank you. Um, thyroid. Thyroid issues. Yes. What um, is a good remedy for thyroidism? Yes. Is it hypo or hyper? Because there's you have low and then you have high. I think it's high. Okay. So somebody has Graves' disease, for instance, bulging eyes. They're having too high. So a really good remedy for thyroid issues um, that I find is kelp. Okay. Kelp is very good for both hypo and hyperthyroidism. It actually works both ways, okay? Um, in addition to some other herbs, which I can, I can give you in a little bit, but kelp is probably the number one thing that we use for that. Kelp is a sea vegetable. It has all the minerals and, and things of that sort. And thyroid is a hormone. If you can get, sometimes if your thyroid is not functioning, and you can get your adrenal gland to pick up because they work together. It's uh, overactive thyroid. Kelp. Yeah, okay. Kelp is very good at that. Mm -hmm. Also, there are some foods that really help with overactive, overactive thyroid, such as, um, what's that root vegetable? That is radish. Radish is very good for overactive thyroid, and so is kelp. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Over there, back there, microphone. <laughs> We're going to get through this presentation at some point. Yes, doctor. We have a pretty good amount of seminar here. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Seminar. I just play one on TV. <laughs> yeah. But I would like you to help, help us on this. Uh, we have have, um, have seminar here, and uh, we are yeah. told how to eat healthy and things like that. Yes. Now, when it comes to cake, um, happy birthday to you. <laughs> and, we, and, we, and we see that white yes. cake with a Mercy. lot of sugar in yes, it. Yes, yes, good question. Great question. And uh, I saw that with my own eyes here. Maybe they would show me out of the church, but they won't. Great question. They won't show you uh, out. I'm, I'm listening. I yeah, got to look yeah. up something. I'm listening. Yeah. They would say maybe, who are you, Brother Boyd, to tell me that? They want somebody like you to tell them. 
But we have seminar upon seminar here, and uh, we see how we should eat. And uh, we have been having the same thing over and over. So I say, what good is it to us? Yeah. We are eating. Uh, He's the, right. We are eating unhealthy. These unhealthy things. We are using um, wine in cake, and we are using the same thing that the world uses. Oh. And then we have. Uh, an altar call asking God to heal us and yeah. to help us from our disease that we have. Yeah. Help me on that pass, okay. doctor. Hold on. Now, he's, now I'm going to get stoned. I know he didn't mention the Jamaican Christmas cake. That's been soaking in rum all year. You want me to go there? And, and the Haitian has the cremas. That's the little... little <laughs> okay. That cake... Okay, there is no nutritional value in alcohol. None. And the Bible says wine is a mocker and strong drink is a brawler. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Friends... What did I say? And I'll keep saying it again this morning. Last Sabbath, there's only one thing we can take to heaven. It's our character, not our culture. There are some things in our culture that we must reject and let go. We should not be eating a rum cake. It has alcohol in it. And though it doesn't make us drunk per se, but it's not necessarily healthy for our bodies. And the Bible said, be sober and be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, seeking, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now, let me finish the question. There are lots of cooking talents in this church. I've, I've seen it. I've tasted it. There is no reason why some of the women in here cannot put together a nice plant-based carrot cake without the added sugar and the bad ingredients. I wish I was trying to pull up the picture. If you go on our website on Facebook, we make the best carrot cake, 100% plant-based, healthy, with einkorn flour. All right? Just one, it just looks so beautiful. In fact, that carrot cake is so popular that we have to stop making it because there's just, people were coming to get it whole. So... It could be done. We just need to exercise a little extra effort, women. E exercise some extra effort and say, I'm going to make a healthy cake. It can be done. Substitute things. Remove things that are bad, right? And you don't need the alcohol cake. You really don't. And, you know, I have, in my culture, it's the same. We have, that, we have the cremas around Christmas where even Adventists, all right? It was in my home. And we, my father was a minister. It was just a culture thing. But we have to start to leave those things behind because we can't take it to the promised land. All right, we'll go to him. We'll go to my brother over there, and then you. Yes, just to touch back on the, the cake, the wine cake. <laughs> yeah. um, I was told by an elder oh. that, that, that when the fruit is soaking in the, in the rum, and it is all blended and mixed and go in the oven. The heat of the oven absorbs <laughs> that thing. Is that true? Is that, I need to know, is that okay. true? I think we know the answer to that. It's still there. It doesn't go away because the heat. <laughs> Because the chemical structure is still in the food. <laughs> that elder was, uh, wow. Yeah, he, that elder became a scientist at the time. The, the heat soaked it up. It still tastes like rum. I've had that cake. <laughs> But okay, let, let, even so, right, what in that cake is actually nutritious when that 
thing been soaking up for how long? Where is the properties? Where is the, the uh, enzymes? All these things has already been taken out. It, it can't be good. Yeah, I think you guys know the answer to that. Yes. My, right here, right here, Elder. Yeah, microphone, yeah, microphone. I was just, um, I'm asking, I, um, uh, you recommended some books here. Um, what about that, that book, um, Back to Eden? That's one of the greatest books. I have it, and I have it with me, in fact. Back to Eden. I, I mean, I wasn't done finishing with the list. Back to Eden is a very wonderful book, quick to the point. Most uh, herbs have a paragraph, and cayenne pepper has been dedicated to, like, probably five or ten pages. So that tells you how important cayenne pepper is. Uh, the other book I recommend is this book, Encyclopedia of Herbal Medicine. This is written by Andrew Chevalier. He is a Ph.D. master herbalist. And this will teach you how to do tinctures, how to put herbs together, and any disease, you go look in the index in the back, and it will tell you what to use. Okay? The other book, I'm going to go through the list, and then we'll move forward is Councils on Health. Very, very important book. If you want to study health and you want to stay around the spirit of prophecy, Councils on Health, Medical Ministry, Ministry of Healing, Councils on Diets and Food, and there's two books, uh, The Medical Missionary Manual by Farrell. He also is the one who wrote the National Sunday Law. The Medical Missionary Manual and what's the other one? The twin books, two little blue books. Uh, the other one's about education, true education. But so those are the books you want to kind of do. Medical ministry, councils on health, councils on diets and foods, uh, ministry of healing, and your natural remedies encyclopedia. If you even start with those, you're going to be okay. Okay? Now, any more questions in the back? I thought you guys said you wanted the presentation. You're just good. It's okay. <laughs> we can go. It's all right, because at first they were like, who wants presentation? Only one person, uh, question, only one person raised their hand, but everybody's question. Okay, over there. Um, how you doing? Do you yes. know about holistic? Huh? Holistic. Holistic. Yeah. W-H-O? Oh, no, H-O-L-E-S-T-I-T. -E that's the one I just talked about. Oh, okay. So... That, the, the H-O-L, the holistic missing, the W, if you look at its definition and the people that use it, every person that is a new ager uses that terminology. So I like the W-H-O-L-I-S-T-I-C, whole, because Jesus would say, will that be made whole with a W, okay? Yes, Pastor, what about... What about Lugol's iodine? In, that's, of good, that's good for thyroid as well. Lugol's iodine, yes. That's a very good one. That, that gives you uh, added iodine. It, that helps. But rarely in the U.S. is it caused because of a, a lack of that. And so sometimes the kelp is a more complete formula because it comes from the ocean and it has all the minerals that your body needs and your thyroid needs to function properly. But thyroid, you have thyroid issue, just look at your lifestyle, really. Uh, there are some people who, have gen who are genetically, uh, who have that inheritance uh, as a result. But you can, you can fix a lot of it with, with your diet. Yes. I have this plant. Of, back home, we call it leaf of life. Mm. Can you tell me um, what... It is good for? Actually, I just have, I've yeah. never, I don't know because I've never heard of it. So I'm, I'm going to have to research it. I've heard of the tree of life, which is, which they call moringa, but I've never heard of that plant. So if anybody knows, please feel free to answer. No? Huh? Never heard of it. 
Probably it's probably under a different name. Huh? <laughs> Felugao. Oh mercy. I will have to even look that one up. Oh. I I I have to research. See, I learn every day. You do. Okay. Okay. I've seen it. Mm, I've seen it. Hmm. Oh, I've seen it, but I don't know what it's for. I'm going to have to research it. So, next question. We got a question right here, pa Pastor. Pastor Melendez, right here. Question. Microphone. I don't even see the microphone anymore. Um, oh, okay. She's got a question. Okay, then after you. Yes. I, I had to undergo radiation for a brain tumor I had, oh. and that resulted in me having a good amount of hair thinning and hair loss. Do, do you have any recommendations on how I can get my hair to grow back? The go-to herbal uh, remedy that everybody uses, and I'm, I, I don't use it because I don't have time, is uh, uh, rosemary but comfrey, I believe. Uh, comfrey is very good. Comfrey hair oils is very good for hair loss. And also, remember, uh, with radiation, with radiation, that happens. Uh, and so that's a natural process. But ultimately, with most people who have gone through radiation prayerfully, the hair will come back. But come free, you can use. Yes. How about the vinegar in breads? Well, you mean like, okay, so, I mean, for me personally, my, you know, the rule is we try to, if I see it, I try to avoid it in my food because I don't think it's necessary. What I use for vinegar is lemon juice. That's my vinegar. If I want to make something taste like a, if I'm making a salad dressing and I want it to taste like vinegary, I'll add lemon juice to it. No, but no. What, what I meant was, uh, my intent was is that the other day I went to the, to the, far, to the store mm -hmm. and almost every bread had vinegar. Oh, got you, yeah. And that is why we need to make, bake our own. Yeah, they do that. And, and most of them will add sugar to it. So it is more of an incentive for us to make, bake our own bread. It's so easy to bake your own bread. So easy. Next year when we come, we're going to do cooking classes. It's so simple. <laughs> it's so simple. Yes, it makes wonderful bread. And especially if you mix it half and half with the spelt. It makes wonderful. It is going to be very heavy and dense. You eat a piece of that bread, it's like you're, it's fill you up. Spelt and einkorn. Spelt and einkorn. Einkorn. I, uh, I'm sorry, E-I-N-K-O-R-N. That is the ancient grain that has not been genetically altered. The DNA structure was not changed, unlike other wheats. So I saw the icon. There's white and there's like brown wheat one. Which there, is better? There is. So the, the good question. Uh, the one of the einkorn uh, is a little bit more refined, and then there's another one that includes the shell. So uh, both of them's good. And if you're just starting out, you can start with the one that I showed you there. And then as you get more into it, then you can actually get the whole, uh, the actual brand within it. But uh, it's, you know, they're both good. Question right there. Here and then there. <laughs> Hello, church. Hello. Um, you were talking earlier about 
um, sugar and milk making alcohol. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I didn't um, say that. The spirit, I read it from what, the spirit of prophecy. Right. Yeah. So I know that they were talking about um, oatmeal is a good thing to eat. Mm -hmm. That was talked about for years, eat oatmeal. Yeah. The problem with the, uh, the American diet, me being American, I have to say, unfortunately what we do is tell people to put extra things on it to make it palatable. Mm -hmm. So once you put your sugar and your milk on your oatmeal, it doesn't help you. Mm -hmm. It now has a problem. And then also a lot of um, industries are, are trying to force on us. A lot of our children eat cereals. That's right. So it might have some healthy things in it, but once you, you know, put the sugar and the milk on it, now it turns into something else, right. which makes another health issue. Right. Um, our sugar intake is, is what's killing us, like you said, because sugar is in a lot, a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, Another uh, documentary that you, I wanted to say that you said earlier about the What the Health also mm. is another documentary is called The Game Changers. Mm -hmm. I've seen that one too. Um, that, that was good. That is good. That is focusing on uh, the athletes version mm -hmm. yeah. of all the vegans and different things that they've eaten as well. Right. Um, going back to what you were saying either about, about reflux disease. I think the problem is, too, is a lot of people eat late, and then they lay down when they, after they eat. Mm -hmm. And that also causes a problem with reflux disease. Mm -hmm. Because then when you lay down horizontal, that makes the food come back up as well. So we get tired when we eat, you lay down right away. Right. And that causes an issue as well. Right. So we need to watch that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, regurgitating. That's why I said not making sure you eat at least four to five hours before bed so that you're fully digested. Some of us eat an hour and then we lay down. And some of us wake up at midnight and eat and then go lay down. So. Yes. Over there. Someone, someone asked a question about leaf of life. Yes. Now the scripture says that the leaf of the tree is for the healing of the nation. Amen. Now, the leaf of life is a capital remedy mm. for cold. Mm. You quail the leaf of life and juice it and sweeten it as sweet as possible with the honey mm -hmm. and you cure your cold. Amen. Well, I have also a cold. I have a cold and flu remedy yeah. as well okay. that is made with pineapple. You're going to juice this. Pineapple, I call it the antiviral. It's also antibacterial and antifungal. Pineapple juice, not in the bottle. You juice it fresh. In the bottle, it's lose, it loses its properties. Half an onion, raw, you juice that. Uh, just half. It doesn't matter what you have. T Red is always better. Three garlic cloves, a ginger root, turmeric root, lemon, orange, oregano, if you have the leaf that's good, the oil is good too. Okay, you got that? Pineapple. Orange, onion, garlic, oregano, ginger, turmeric, lemon, and I forgot cayenne pepper. You give that to anybody with a cold or COVID, whatever it is, it's gone. <laughs> huh? Oh, yeah, we used to treat a lot of people with COVID with that. It'll build up your immune system like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. We call it the antiviral. So, uh, I got another question there. Sister in the hat, red hat. Can I, can I get a um, recipe for high blood pressure? A juice recipe? Yes. Celery. Ginger. Orange. Um, 
parsley, very good. Beets and garlic. There's your high blood pressure juice. And by the way, if you have oregano, put some drops in there. Remember, oregano has seven compounds in it that lowers blood pressure. Seven. It's very powerful. Yes. Wait, we got questions? Hold on. We got you over here. Then we're going to move over on that side. We're going to go here, here, and then there. What do you think about weeds? And what are the good weeds to use? All right. We had that. I, I talked about that extensively on, was it Wednesday or Thursday? On Wednesday night. So go to, go to the YouTube Sunrise, and you will find a whole, a whole spiel about it. Wheat has been, most wheat has been genetically modified. This is why a lot of people have issues with it, especially diabetics. They are more sensitive to the uh, hybridized wheat than the wheat that God made the way he made it. Which is why we recommend, even if you are gluten intolerant, which a lot of people are. See, here's the thing. Before the 1990s, there were no such thing as, you wasn't really hearing too much about gluten intolerance. You know that? You know what happened in the 2000s? The, the wheat that was modernized back in the 50s began to go worldwide. And it began to affect a lot more people. So before that, people did not have that issue with wheat. Our grandparents didn't have that issue with wheat. But now, I showed even the picture of how they shifted the DNA and changed the structure. So now you got to go to what's called the ancient wheat grains, meaning the heirloom wheat that has never been changed. And those are einkorn, spelt, and kamut. If you try those wheat, even if you are gluten intolerant, most people have no issues with them. Okay? Einkorn, spelt, and kamut. Yes, yeah, uh, K-A-M-U-T. It's very common in the Middle East. Yeah. Yes. Um. If someone is diagnosed with discord lupus, what best do you have to prevent for that? It's, lupus is essentially inflammatory. It's inflammation, massive inflammation. And I've seen people who had lupus basically uh, decrease their pain and their inflammation by simply coming off sugar, dairy, and meats. You do understand sugar, dairy, and meats are on what part of the pH scale? Acidic. Most disease live on what side of the scale of the pH? Acidic. So if you move over to the part that's alkaline, which is your natural veggies, your greens, disease cannot live around that area. So what you want to do is bombard them with nice fresh press uh, uh, organic juices. Celery, carrots, beets, kale, all right? Making sure they're eating nuts, lots of green salad, avocados, those kind of fresh foods, lots of fresh fruit, and give them less meat, less dairy, less cheese, less butter, less sugar, and you will find that inflammation under control. All right? Greetings and happy Sabbath, everybody. Greetings. Uh, my question is if you had a resection uh, stomach operation many years ago mm -hmm. and you are constantly depleted in the anemia department and also B12. Yeah. You're looking for the holistic side and vegan or vegetarian side. What would essentially be? The that is a hard one because, and it's not impossible, uh, because essentially they change the structure of the body, <clears throat> right? They take out parts of the stomach. I'm right, I'm guessing, in order for weight loss and those kind of operations. They're really not good operations, right? You really want to not, you really want to shy away from excessively removing body parts, cutting away things that God has made. 
Because God has a way of restoring body parts to, to a, their original function. So what I would say for that one is you can't tolerate lots of food at once. So it's hard. And they recommend you eat often, right? So what I would recommend is you try to blend more of your food, uh, getting all the nutrients in and try to eat a very good amount of healthy foods and just try your best with that. But you can't really take that body part back or fix it the way it was. So it's, it's kind of difficult. So you have to supplement with other things. So you should be juicing. Uh, you should be getting lots of rest. You should be eating uh, the food in its natural state as much as possible, right? Uh, increasing your fiber intake, you know, those kind of things. Uh, and, 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 you know, you have to work with it. You have to make the best of it. So. And on that side over here, we had some questions. Oh, okay, one more, and then we got to go here. One more. One more over here, then we got to go here. Yes. Uh, what is... Um What is the treatment for uh, gastritis? For? Gastritis. Gastritis. Right. Gastritis. So any itis is what? Inflammation. So same thing. Anything that causes inflammation to the body, you want to work to relieve the inflammation. And what foods exacerbate inflammation? Sugar, meat, dairy. So, but slippery elm is very good. That's that food. And by the way, any GI issues, slippery elm and marshmallow root is very good. By the way, okras is very healing for the gut as well. All right? Not fried okras. That's right. Steam okras. And drink that water. Let it soothe the gut. If you're constipated... Or if you have hemorrhoids, you need to be eating okras all the time. But just focus on the anti-inflammatory foods. So I heard you talking about earlier your raw food diet. How did you feel around that time period when you didn't cheat? Huh? You felt good, right? So there you go. You had that good food that was anti-inflammatory and things were kept at bay. Yes, sir. Uh, maple syrup. As a sweetener, is it good? Maple syrup is excellent as a sweetener. I love it. Thank you. In fact, I've got some maple syrup trees over on the property that we're going to try to tap into next year. But I love maple syrup. But everything in moderation. You don't want to drink it out of the gallon. <laughs> yes. Yes. Is, is that the same thing in moderation for the intake of alkaline? Alkaline in your water or whatever or however you can get it. Yes. So I'm not too convinced on this whole kick about alkaline water. <laughs> I know it, it's just extra money that I think you're spending for. As you're just kind of wasting your money, I think, on the alkaline water. Um, I would rather just do a juice per se, and just keep it that way. Uh, but you do want to refrain from drinking the water, the city water, because it has the fluoride in it, right? And you, know, you do know what the fluoride does to your body. Uh, plastic bottle water, again, you know, they talk about it having a lot of plastic in it, even though yeah. you can't see it. Glass water is better, but there's nothing like having your own well when it comes naturally from the ground, right? Yes. But the alkaline water, I'm not too convinced on it. I'm, I'm really, because right. who's to say? I don't know what they put in there. <laughs> they can say it's alkaline, but well, you can measure it or whatever. But I, yeah. I just, not, I'm not too convinced. Right, not buying it out of the store. But okay. how do you feel about filtrated water system? Uh, oh, no, system? I, I don't have an issue with that. In fact, I think okay. reverse osmosis is yes. one of the best. Yes. yes. Yeah, there, there's no, there, I don't have an issue with that. Okay, that's no. how I'm getting my alkaline from the yes. um, filtration system. Yes. And it takes out all the chlorine and calcium and all that stuff. Right, that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes. Excellent. I'm not an expert on water by all means. I just like well water. Yeah. I've heard about um, a couple individuals online. Yeah. 
that have been drinking their urine for the last year. No. That is something I've heard, not I, encouraged. That is, that is a practice. That is a practice that is, if anybody practiced this practice here, it's not good. People do do that. I've come across people who even massage with the urine. I'm not lying. And some of this practice originates in magic, witchcraft. So it's disgusting because there's a reason why the urine is leaving your body. And there's people who say, drink the urine and you, it will make you healthy. That is a satanic trick because God is getting it out of your body because it's, it's, it's poisonous. Waste. It's waste. It's waste. And then you put it back in. That's from the enemy. Right? Yeah, that's not good. Just one more question. Someone yes. asked about um, boiling the city water for a short time or a, a given time uh, for consumption. Now, I am not a chemistry major by all means. Any chemists in here? Any chemists? I'm not sure. Oh, there's a chemist. All right. Boiling the city water, does that do any good to it? Does that remove anything? If you have the city water that has the... Oh, microphone, microphone, yes, right back there. Um, I didn't do too well in chemistry. <laughs> Mic check. So, no, what happens is... Um, uh, so, never, never consume Zephyrhill water. Let me start with that. Um, I was at a training seminar um, many years ago, and one of the speakers was talking about boiling the city water. Yeah. There's more medical waste. In there. Um, uh, runoff waste. Uh, and all you do is that you, you just cook the germs. <laughs> germs can stay at a temperature yeah. of... Over 600 degrees. Mercy. There we go. From the chemist. So now, a lot of people say, oh, I'll spray lice on it. Then, <laughs> then you have lemon-scented germs. <laughs> you have to first, you have to buy a water filtration system. Yeah. Now, not all are equal. Yeah. If you pay, um, I don't know, 60 bucks, you, that's not a good You're brand. probably, yeah, not getting it. The one good. that I have is $2,000. Well, well, guess what? Well, then, I understand you can't afford it, but can you afford chemo? Yeah. Or a hospital bill. Now, my, the pastor's house that I leave from here this Sabbath, and I go to her church on Sunday, she's going through cancer treatment right now. She didn't take my advice for the past 14 years. And I literally invited her to come to the health seminar. She and her husband says no, because it's 7 8 Venice. Mercy. Seven day Adventist. <laughs> yeah. So, but boiling water does nothing. Yeah. It does nothing. It does nothing. So, have mercy. Thank so, you for that clip. So, you would have to filter the water first, which one, a very good one would be that has a five step filtration system, which actually includes ultraviolet light and um, a carbon filter along with um, charcoal. Charcoal. Charcoal, yes. So, those, those are the first three major steps. Yes. And then if you boil that, then you kind of somewhat have okay water to drink. But it still wow. ain't really good because here in the United States, you, uh, oh my God, uh, don't get me started. You need a well. <laughs> Country living in a well. Right. So let's go quickly. It's 7 o'clock, brethren. I didn't even get through this presentation. All right, let me just go quickly through this. Home sanitariums. Begin to do medical missionary work with what? The conveniences which you have at hand. Did you hear that? Don't go crazy. Oh, I got to have a $6,000 tub system. I got to have, no, no, no. 
The Lord says, what do you have in your hands? Isn't that what he said to Moses? Use what you have in your hands. Now, there's a few things you're going to need. You're going to need a basic blood pressure cuff. You're going to need a scale. Why? You're going to weigh the people before and after. In some cases, if you have somebody who has CHF, I've had a gentleman, any nurses in here? Nurse, nurse, add gentlemen, any other nurses? Nurse? Any male nurses in here? Okay. You ha I had a gentleman who came with congestive heart failure. How often should you weigh that person? Every day. And you should be listening to their lungs, auscultating their lungs, measuring their, measuring the swelling around their ankle, looking at their edema, because you want to make sure that, listen, if you are in a sanitarium and something goes down and that person, we've never had that happen to us, but I've known people go, who go to sanitarium and then they end up in the ER. So you have to determine what level of acuity that patients that you're taking, right? But you, remember, you're not a hospital. You're doing things God's way, right? And so you always have to have the person sign a consent form. You create that. And at the same time, you give them the, uh, the, 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 the bit on, hey, listen, we're, I'm not a doctor. We're not doctors unless you have a doctor on site. And you are coming in at your own will, and therefore you're doing this on your own, on your, at your own risk, right? Not to scare them, but you're just covering your bases. You understand? Just being wise. But in most cases, the Lord will bless. We've never had an emergency happen. We've treated a lot of people by God's grace. Everybody who's left always said that they were blessed and that things had reversed. Okay? So it's a heaven-ordained work. you got to pray heaven. Is this what you want me to do? Yes or no? Yes, because we have come to a time where every member of the church should take hold of the medical missionary work. So begin with the, with, we begin to do the work with the conveniences that you have. You got to look at your home area. Preferably, it's better to be in the country. Right? Because remember, the sanitarium should be in the country. Why? Because after they eat, you want to take them for a walk. And you want to make sure they have peace. There's a nice garden around. They can look at flowers. You're putting plants in their room, making sure there's a Bible at their bedside, making sure you're writing. Some people do like every day they'll put like a scripture, like a, a, an, encouraging, an encouraging scripture as they make their bed for them, right? And you're continuing to encouraging these people to look to Christ. So we talked about the, the country living last night. Notice what this says in Adventist home, why it's important for them to be in a country area. Adventist home, page 135, 31, paragraph 5, it says, Find rest of spirit and the beauty and quietude and peace of nature. Let the eye rest on, on what? The green fields. Let the eye rest on the green fields, on the groves and the hills. Look up to the blue sky unobscured by the city's dust and smoke, and breathe the invigorating air of heaven. Amen. This is where the Lord wants us to be. He wants us to look at the green grass, look at the blue sky, and breathe. And, and by the way, those of you who were here last night, that's where we live. That's, that's our little place right there you're looking at. Okay. Right there. So that's where God intends for us to be. Not in the city. You see the difference? You see the difference? Now the water is nice. Right? All the buildings around, not too good. Again, again, remember when God created Adam and Eve, where did he place them? In a garden. Instead of dwelling where only the work of men can be seen, this is a quote, where the sights and sounds frequently suggest thoughts of evil, where turmoil and confusion bring weariness and disquietude, go where you can look upon the works of God. Amen. So those who are looking for country living, I'm going to give you a lesson right now. 
Here's what you need to study. Adventist Home, chapter 19, 20, and 21. You need to go study those chapters, and you need to take notes. And you start a list, pros and cons. And you write down everything that's being said in chapter 19, 20. Chapter 19, where shall the home be? Chapter 20, the family in the city. Chapter 21, advantages of the country. Study those three chapters. And pray and claim God's promise and begin making move. You know, some people just start packing. Don't know where they're going. Lord, I'm moving by faith. That's what we did. That is what we did. And if you guys never even hear the testimony on how the Lord gave, we obtained it. It wasn't because of money, I can tell you that. It was a miracle, and that's what the Lord wants to do. You just start packing your stuff. Say, Lord, I'm going to the country. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm packing by faith. Start packing your stuff. Start giving away stuff, because you ain't going to be able to take everything with you. Scale down. The Lord gave me great light on health reform in connection with my husband. I was to be a medical missionary worker. This is Ellen White writing. I was to set an example to the church by taking the sick to my home and caring for them. This I have done, giving the women and children vigorous treatment. So what was she doing in her church? Bringing the sick in her home and treating them. You do realize that there's counsel against putting our elderly people in nursing home. Yes, yes. That the church was supposed to be the one to take care of those people. You know, our message is very practical. We've taken it and we've just made it about the Sabbath. And we come to church once a week. And during the week we're living just like the world. That's not the message. This is a movement. It's not a club. You know what a club is? You're just a member, right? This is a movement. So in her day, she encouraged taking the sick people in her church, in her home, and taking care of them, giving them rigor, vigorous treatment. So she had a home sanitarium. So this is a picture of us at our first health retreat. We had it. We didn't even think anybody was going. We've never done it before. We had no experience. We didn't go to any school to teach us how to do it. I just, we just called someone who had experience, which was Brother Hollis over there the, uh, and Sister Shantoya. The, the Brother Hollis is over there with Shantoya next to my wife. And he was trained at Mim and Wilson Place. And they helped run that facility. And... We called Brother Hollis. We said, look, we want to start having health retreats. And, you know, with no experience, never done it before, we looked at a schedule, what a typical schedule would look like, 6 a.m., rise and shine, give them water with their lemon, warm lemon water. Uh, when they first come in, you give them a detox drink with, oh, two tablespoons of Epsom salt and two liters of water, warm water. You make them drink that. So we, we just looked at a schedule. We would have worship with them at certain time. So 6.30, breakfast, 6.30 worship, 7 o'clock exercise, 7 a.m., uh, 7.30, 8 o'clock uh, breakfast. Then go for a walk. And then after the walk, uh, an hour, we do a presentation. After the presentation, we do uh, some counseling session. Oh, don't forget, vitals every morning before their warm lemon water. Why? You know, while we were at this first health retreat, that gentleman over by uh, uh, my brother here, Brother Hollis, the, the dark-skinned brother there, all the way down, they look a little Hawaiian. They're from Fiji. They came down from California. They called us, and he actually found out while he was there that he was diabetic or pre-diabetic. He didn't know. Why did he find out? Because we were doing vitals every morning. We took their blood pressure, we took their weight, we took their blood sugar, uh, we measured their pulse, their temperature, and everything, and we would do that before they eat or drink anything. So a fasting blood sugar. So we started to do that. There was a plan, a strict schedule to follow. 
Uh, schedule for morning devotion, schedule for evening devotion. You must include those two. Morning and evening prayer, that's the majority of it. And in between that, we would do treatments. And treatments would include massages. By the way, when you are dealing with medical missionary work, it is imperative that women take care of women and men take care of men. A woman should not be massaging a man or vice versa. That's not God's ordained method. Remember, she said the Lord only has one way that the Lord ordains. So you got to be careful because there are receptors on the skin. All right. You got to be careful because the end. Right. So you make sure you have women and men involved. And especially when you are dealing with because, for instance, if I do, if I'll do a massage on a man. And after I massage the men, the man. I had a situation where I massaged this, this brother and I had to put him in a sauna, which I'm going to show you. We do saunas. And after I do sauna, immediately after the sauna, which stimulates a fever, which brings the body's immune system to the level where it needs to work, I need to get him in the cold shower. And he's naked. You understand? He might be in the shower. He might drop. I need to be right next to him and check up on him. I mean, most men are okay with that, but you can have a female do that. It's not like the hospital where the nurses take care of the men and, they, you know, it could be a female nurse taking care of a man or vice versa. This is heaven's ordained method. Now, there are in some cases where I have seen in certain sanitariums where a man will take care of a woman uh, who has, let's say, breast cancer. But that man is an older gentleman who's well advanced. Like, I know, like, for instance, Memon Wilson, you know, and he's, he's done it. But generally, it's not advised. If you have the woman there, let the woman take care of it. This is why this work is perfect for husband and wife to do together. You understand? And I would say, don't start with a huge caseload. Start with one. So anyways... Five people show up at our first health retreat. <laughs> you hear with Barbara O'Neill testimony, she said she had one. Five people showed up. We're like, whoa, Lord, what did we do? That lady over there showed up, and we were, we were not experts. But that's how you learn. My whole life, that's how I've learned. As I say, I give the testimony, you know, my whole life, that's the way I've learned. The Lord just threw things at me, and I'm like, and he knows I'm in my element because by God's grace, I'll figure it out. And so we had that first health retreat and it was a blessing. That lady in the pink, she came with a blood pressure of 180 over 100 and something. Come to find out she hadn't had a bowel movement in 10 days. We, the women did a colonics on her and got that stuff out. And uh, we stayed up with her one night, all night till 3 a.m. That's another thing. Some nights you're going to be up because the devil's battling. It's a battle. It's a spiritual battle. That lady there in the blue, she cried. She said, I don't want to go up the stairs. She came with a cane. She walked out without the cane. She lost a total of 50 pounds, now had a brain tumor. Now she's living somewhere around here in Florida. Uh, you know, the other people. So it's, it's, it's going to be a battle, battle as you are working with these people. And you always want to make sure this is important. You try to get them to fast the first day completely off food. You don't bombard them with a bunch of food. Juice fast, okay? You give them juice. Give them juice when they first come in. And you try to get them to fast at least 24 hours initially. So typically when we start a health retreat, we'll start like on a Thursday afternoon. And they won't eat from Thursday when they check in all the way up to Usually uh, Friday at 2.30, which is dinner time. And I've had people where I made them fast till Saturday as well, depending on the situation. And they do very well. Even diabetics, you know. Some people worry, oh, my, I'm, my blood sugar is going to be low. But, you know, you have natural glycogen stores that takes over. Right. And the body does well under fasting because growth hormone is released, which is what we call the healing hormone. So they get foods like this fresh foods, and here's a gentleman that we helped, 
but he is unfortunately he passed away some time after which brings me to that other point that I mentioned not everybody you help is going to be there to recover some you are helping to prepare for death you have to remember that and so don't feel bad if something happens or you hear somebody dying prepare them to go through so and he had renal failure, this gentleman here. Very sweet guy he was. All right, I'm almost done. It says, the cause we knew not, we searched out. There are whole families that this work has been instrumental in saving. You have no idea how many people I know that this work has saved. This is medical missionary work. We had no hospital, but we used our own what? Home as a place to which could be taken the sick and suffering that they might be restored and saved. Do you see the point? If there is one thing that is important that you are bringing to these people is salvation. The key to it is pointing them to Jesus. You tell them, I'm not only interested in you being healed, but I'm interested in your salvation. That is the purpose of true medical missionary work. And so this lady came that she was coming out of our sauna. By the way, that sauna is about $170 on Amazon. Not expensive. So you can start with little things. Purchase the saunas. This is a full body steam sauna. And you also have a sauna that just that keeps the head out. This one they like better. This one is a little bit more intense. Claustrophobic. So somebody who's claustrophobic, you don't want to put them in that steam sauna. You don't want to, you want to, when you first give them a sauna treatment, you want to make sure you take their vitals before. You want to make sure you stay with them throughout the treatment. You never leave them. You understand? The devil is cunning. You never leave them. You stay by their side. And you have water in hand. And if they say, you, say, you want to drink a water, give them a, because it's stimulating a fever. And when they're done, you take their vitals again. And then you get them in a cold shower. All right. What is that doing? Relaxing. But afterwards, it's also bringing their blood cells and closing those pores as cold as they can tolerate and bringing the immune system to the forefront to fight. Most people will just take a nice nap afterwards. It's so invigorating. And I encourage you. To do this in your own home. Some of you who have inflammation, you are sick. This one right here, probably going to cost you about $150. Easy to set up. You sit in it. You take a cold shower afterward. It's detoxing you. In fact, if we had room, I would have bought those to go along with the juices. But we didn't have room to carry them. Which is why I want to come back to train you guys now how to do the home sanitarium. And actually have actual patients here who are interested in participating for the health benefits. So this was Linda, one of our guests. She's the one that the nephrologist fired, no longer has to see the nephrologist. She went from stage three to stage two to stage one to no stage. She comes and eat out our place every Sunday. And last time, my wife was saying, that she came, and, and you know, sometimes you tell people things, but it doesn't register. Because we always reveal the Sabbath, we open Sabbath, we pray with them. But again, we don't push, you understand? We just reveal the truth and let the seeds, God will water them. And my wife said, she came to the restaurant before we came and said, you know what? I read about you guys. I mean, she knew what we were. She said, I read that you guys are seven day Adventists and you, leave, you live 10 years longer. So she's inquiring. These people are the people that we are told would have never come in contact with the gospel of the gospel that we have except through this work. Amen. Remember, largely a big amount will come from the world. And so this is God's ordained work of finishing the work. And you can do that still while supporting yourself. As we are now past the Sabbath, we can talk about what you would charge. Some places... What time is it? What time Sabbath close? All right, we'll wait. 
Because, you're, again, you're not going to be doing this work merely for free as well, right? Because you're using your resources. You've got to be realistic. You're going to cook for them. You're going to put them in a room. You're going to use water. You're going to buy herbs. So you've got to look at realistically, what is this going to cost me to take care of this person for three days, five days, seven days, ten days? You never want to go back to back either. Most sanitariums take a break in between because it's exhaustive work. Have yeah. you ever taken care of somebody that's sick? It's, it's exhaust Physically, spiritually, mentally. So after you finish a session, you want to take at least 10 days off where you don't have another patient come. And then we'll talk about how you can book it where you basically are bringing enough to not only be able to self-support yourself, but to also pay your bills. And some of you who want to become self-supportive to do that. So um, it says here, in the days of Christ, there were what? No sanitariums in the Holy Land. But wherever he went, he himself was a sanitarium. That's from Lou Melinda Messages, page 57. So wherever we went, we go, we have to be a sanitarium. I'm telling you, young people, we have a lot of young people that are interested in this work that we have uh, work with. So this was her blood pressure when she first came in. You see that? 167 over 103. And we could not get, she was one of the ones that said, it's not working. It's not working. We would say, Linda, let's pray. Just be patient. Let's wait upon the Lord. And we would give her teas. We would give her juices. You see that? A simple bucket. We're doing a water treatment. You don't need nothing expensive. All right? Make sure you buy some johnnies or what we call hospital gowns. Some towels because that's what you're going to need to put them in before they go in the sauna. And things of, of that nature. Uh, this is one of the medical missionaries we work with, and Sister Anika, unfortunately, wanted to come with us so bad. And things didn't work out. Uh, things didn't work out. We had a plan. We, we, she tried to the last minute. You guys, she would have also been a, a source of blessing here as well. But maybe next time, by God's grace. But that lady was laying in the bed, in that place, we, were, we had the health retreat. She called, and she spent 10 days with us from New Mexico. She flew from New Mexico. So when your patients fly, you're going to have to arrange to pick them up. So we have to go pick her up. And sometimes they come at night, which is not ideal. So try to get them to book their flight for the daytime. So we had to go pick her up, bring her in. And she was, she was a challenge. Let's just see. She was in stage five kidney failure. Very thin, anemic, low energy. Your typical kidney failure patient. So thin that she couldn't even sit down on the chair. She had to have extra cushion. Cause, uh, but we work with her, work with her diet. And within, within three days of going home after the 10-day retreat, I still have her text. She texts me back with the good news that her creatinine and her numbers was dropping. Amen. About a month later, got another text. Well, I'm now in stage four. About a few months later, got another text. Well, my nephrologist says I'm no more a candidate for dialysis. Wow. And last I checked with her, she was going along, doing things regularly, and incorporated back into the community again and working and doing things. Amen. She followed the program to the T. Yes. And I told her, you must get off the meat diet. Yes. That's the first thing. And she did. And she saw the results. So that was, that was another retreat. Um, we have Several people here, that lady, the older lady was about 84 years old. She was our oldest guest, 84. Um, that gentleman over there had kidney failure as well with the hat. He's a carpenter. I believe he was in stage three, and his issue was his blood pressure. He came with his wife, which we taught her how to cook and things like that. And the others are some folks from church who helped us out and, and so on and so forth. There's a lot more pictures I have of 
people who have helped. This was another retreat that we had. That one, uh, we had uh, this gentleman right here behind a gray board standing tall. Uh, he came in with uh, type 2 diabetes. His blood pressure was uncontrolled. Um, basically, he talked to me and he said he was on the point of death. He was losing uh, quite a bit of function. Uh, his hemoglobin A1C was about 12 or 13. Um, his blood sugars couldn't stay below 300. I had him fast when he came in. I put him, I give him a water. We put him on a juice fast. Uh, and he was one of the easiest by God's grace. We put this man on a juice fast and tell them to not eat for 24 hours. By the next, within, within 12 hours of the fast, his blood sugar had regulated to normal. And it didn't change for about a month or two afterwards, he stopped using his insulin. He told me, I don't no longer use it. My blood sugar is under control. And then last I checked with him, his wife said, well, he kind of stopped following the program. And it went back. But he was one of the cases that he couldn't afford it. And he was what we call a offering. We said, Lord, well, we always have a room for one person who can afford it. This is an offering to you. And this man had all kinds of herbs and things in his garden that he was bringing to us on a weekly basis. He was so happy. But uh, last I heard was that he wasn't following what we had taught him. And so as a result, his issue, mind you, he got off the insulin for up to two months. But then he didn't continue. He didn't continue. He got weary and he stopped following. Uh, this was uh, another lady there, another retreat. Uh, my daughter is on the bed and my wife was massaging, giving a female a massage. That's why she's covered like that. Um, she had some issues that we just talked to her and she said both her and her husband came. Her husband was also another diabetic who was losing his eyesight. And she just messaged me the other day and said he's doing great. And um, we have, she said, I have seen not only changes in his health, but also in our marriage life since the retreat. Amen. So that was a blessing. Brother Andy, he also was going to come down with us. He's from Panama. He's a master massage, but he specializes in pain. You have the pain. He will find it, locate what muscle is in, takes care of it. He has his own shop. And all the way up at the last minute, he said, I forgot it was spring break that I promised to spend time with my children. So he was going to come as well, but maybe next time we'll get some of those people to come. And here is the gentleman with the glasses that had lost his eyesight that I told you about. His um, health was restoring. The lady next to him and the brown, she came in with ovarian cancer. And she just messaged the other day and says, I'm seeing what's going on in sunrise. I wish I could have been here with you. Non Adventist, these, you know, non Adventist. So we, she was, she was another one who was very poor and couldn't afford. And through a friend who recommended her, we said, all right, we will take her as an offering. And, you know, she soaked up everything we taught her and was so grateful by the work. And like I said, the seeds are planted in heaven, right? That was another one. What we were doing there was a thyroid poultice because she had hypothyroidism. So there was a cayenne pepper poultice that was being applied to her that uh, Sister Charmaine was doing. Oh, Brother Ned, <laughs> he was a character. They came from Maryland. He drove up. He's an... He, he drove up with his whole family. His wife from, was from Kenya. We don't even know how the Lord led these people to us. They just call us. I saw you had something. Can you help us? That's what's going to happen when you open up the home sanitarium. Amen. We didn't seek these people. Out of nowhere, the, the Lord just connected. I don't know where this, how this man got my number. <laughs> so he came down with his whole family, him and his wife and two children. And we taught them, we trained them, we taught them about the Sabbath. They're not Adventists. 
He was a CHF patient. I wish I had the video of him. This man lost 20 something pounds in a day and a half. It was all fluids. He had all fluids. And we given him the 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 Uber Ursi. We had given him the 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 corn silk, the the dandelion, and the, the water was just coming off of him. And his wife did a testimonial on our page too about her experience. And we also had this gentleman, he's actually Haitian, and that's his wife right there. Uh, there's a church I used to go to, and she had uh, I had told her, I said, you know, he was in a nursing home after he had a stroke, really bad stroke. He's in his 40s. His blood pressure. Blood pressure is no joke, friends. In his 40s, he had a really bad stroke and was basically paralyzed on the left side. And his wife said, do you think there's hope? And I said, well, I think you can get him out of the nursing home because they're going to kill him. He had been there for three years. Can you imagine? This man was in the nursing home for three years. Took him out of the nursing home, brought him to the retreat. Now he's living at home with her. He's doing things on his own, doing more physical therapy. Again, not everything is going to be fixed at once, but it's a beginning point. And I wish I got the videos of him standing, pulling himself up, exercising the hand that was not moving. And before he left, I saw him lift up that leg that was almost numb and got into the car. And he said a lot of these principles he already knew. He's a Seventh-day Adventist. But he said he had forgotten about them, so he went back to plant-based. So, yeah, that was, that's Brother Remy. Brother Remy. So, you see, he was cheesing right there. He's happy. We, have, we even have a gate belt on him, because that's how we have to get him around the table from time to time. So, you see our food there. All homemade, very good food. Now, Councils on Health, it says, many will go out to labor for the master who have not been able to take what? A regular course of study and school. Did you hear that? You don't need a regular course of study. If you have it, by all means, that's a plus. You don't need it. Okay? You don't need it. As good as Sister Burke is, as the health director... You don't need to have a degree to do it. You just need to have a heart that the Lord can use. You know, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. We say that all the time. So it says, many will go out to labor for the master who have not been able to take a regular course of study in school. God will what? Help these workers. They will obtain knowledge from where? The higher school and will be fitted to take their position in the rank and file of workers as nurses. Did you hear that? You can become a nurse without a degree. The great medical missionary, who's that? The great medical missionary sees every effort that is made to what? Find access to souls by presenting the principle of health reform. Anybody can start a home sanitarium. And so... Look at that. That's a beautiful plate. That's a beautiful plate. So with that being said, is it after Sabbath now? We'll close Sabbath. And then we'll talk about prices that you may want to charge somebody who's going to come to your home sanitarium. Okay. Let's sing Day is Dying in the West, one stanza. You know that one? That's our, that's the Haitian Sabbath closing song. You don't know about that one. You know about that one. Who knows about that? (laughs) That's the Haitian Sabbath closing song. Amen. Day is dying in the West. Yeah, 51. That's the Haitian classic Sabbath closing song. (laughs) See, there are some good things in culture that can remain. But there are some things that we need to let go. All right? Every Sabbath closing song, we sing that in Haiti. Every Sabbath. Day. Day. Amen. 
We'll stand. Day is dying and the west. Heaven is virgin, earth with rest. Wait and worship while the night sets the evening lamps the Lord to all the sky. Elder Stables, we close out, close out for prayer, and then we will discuss. Let us pray. Let us let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for this day you have given us, this your holy Sabbath day, and we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for all those who came out today to listen to your manservant. And we have 
the word that was spoken today was pertinent to our lives to show how we can better live for you. And we thank you for giving us the understanding of how to best serve you by taking care of our spiritual health. We pray now that as we have listened to these words, we put them into practice. We will allow you to work in us a marvelous miracle in our lives that we can go forth and be true medical missionaries in, the, in our homes and in our community. That as we do so, we see people around will come to know you by what we do and what we, how we live. Thank you for your manservant who came and shared with us the good news of salvation. As we look forward to, you, to your soon coming, prepare ourselves to meet you spiritually and physically. We thank you again for these words spoken and shared with us. Now, as we prepare to uh, leave, we pray that you will come now, give us safe travel. But before we leave, we will discuss further how we can best serve you. We thank you again. We're here in our prayers. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. And quickly, uh, before I forget, somebody let me use this charger. I don't remember. So who did, who, somebody let me use this charger. Oh, okay. Before, don't forget. So let's talk about quickly, quickly, quickly. How much you would charge for someone who can afford it. Uh, a lot of places, you know, are charging a little bit, in my estimation, too much. Right? Remember, you're not doing this only for money. You're doing this to lead people to Christ. So let's say, like the way we figure it out, sometimes you got to look at the food. You got to look at your, your time, the labor. If you have helpers with you, because sometimes you may need helpers, that you need to give them something from there. So let's say, depending on your cost of living in the area, let's say you charge the person $300 a day. Okay? Let's say you do $300 a day. And they're staying for, let's say, three days, right? So that would be a total of like 900, everything included. But if they're staying for seven days, you have about 2,100, right? I'm just giving you an estimation. You can, you can some people do a, a little bit higher than that. You could, because people are willing, people who need help with their health and have the means are willing to pay to come. So let's say you were to charge them roughly 450 a day and they're coming in for 10 days. So that's a total of $4,500. That's for one person for 10 days. Now I think that's a little heavy on the price. So I would cut that by two. So I would say 2,250 is fair. Wouldn't you say? So like for 250 times 7, or 300 times 7, I'm sorry. That's 2,100, all right? So let's say you take, you take three guests for that month. So that's 2,100 times 3. So that's 6,300. Many of you, you're able to make your mortgage payment with that. Or whatever the case may be. So it's, it's up to you, uh, you know, how you want to arrange that. But don't focus too much on how much money you're going to charge them. And always have compassion. If somebody said, look, I have cancer, I'm dying. And don't say, well, you don't have the money to pay. Right? Don't do that. Because Christ cannot bless you that way. And I always advise people to consider, consider someone who doesn't have the money to pay for it and say, you know what? I want to help that person. So, Lord, what can you do? Can you do half? You know, you work with them. Can you make a, can you make a payment plan? You never turn them away is the point that I'm making here. All right? Because Christ didn't turn anybody away. All right? But we are counseled 
to actually do this work and to charge for it. Because you're using resources. You're using your time. You're using herbs. You're going to buy equipment in order to run it. So you have to make a little something and in order to, to better serve and to keep it going. All right? Any questions on that? Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes, it's okay. Yes. Yeah. Right. It is to give back glory yes. to God. Yes. And to bring people who are inside and outside. And that's right. That's right. Then money will come. That's right. And this is the reason why I say that those who are in the church that can help in program like these, mm -hmm. the people who are suffering with, with um, disease. disease. Yeah. That's right. It's not to gain for my own gain. That's right. You know, and that's why I believe sunrise have some wonderful that um brethren here that reach in the church. Yes. The love that they not only show here, but the love that they live, I believe by the God God's grace will make it into That's right. And, and also remember too that the reason why we, you have to you, you have to kind of get a little bit is because you need money to give the gospel as well. You cannot preach the gospel sometimes without some of the resources. You need resources. And so, yes, you, sister, you're going to say something here? I think over there. No? Yes. Oh. Yeah, I did not. But that's a good question. Had amputation. Yes. Yeah. And even, even when the leg is, is at a certain state, it can be revived. I've seen that too. I, I did not. So very good for wound care uh, is uh, calendula. It heals. It, it, it repairs bones. Honey. You know, there's a wound care. Uh, um, you can put honey, yeah, honey. They actually, meta honey is one of the medical things that they use. So there is, there is, and we, it's okay. You just got to restore the circulation to that area and lower the blood sugar. Yes. Question. Okay, yes. Okay, so my phone number is 518. 409-3081. So 518-518-409-3081. It's 518-409-3081. It's always better to text me first because I get phone calls that are a scam and I don't pick up if I don't recognize. So better to text. Okay? All right. It's getting late. Oh, one more question, brother. And one and one another. Um, you mentioned something about Epsom salt. Yes. I thought it was only externally, but you said that you gave. No, not not to drink. No, no. Celtic. I meant Celtic salt. Celtic. Yes. Epsom is mostly for yeah external. <laughs> Op 
announcements. <laughs> I'm gonna. Somebody's calling me right now, actually. <laughs> Just, I'm still in the meeting. <laughs> I just want to thank um, everyone. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Listen. <laughs> you guys drained I mean, you know me what? out, you know. Yes, <laughs> he has been that. helping us even before we came here because yes. I told him that we were going to do the, the raw diet for 21 days. And he said, I can help you with that. So he sent us 20, um, seven days of menus for seven days for the raw. And that's what we've been using. So before he got here, he has been helping us. Yeah, and if I call him for anything... He's willing to help me, you know. So he has been doing a lot. And we have testimony. People are telling me um, that the medication that they're taking, they're seeing such good results. Somebody told me that her, her, um, her husband said, her blood pressure, his blood pressure has never been so good. He said, am I sick? Look at this. So look at this. And it's just natural remedy that we're using. Just natural remedy. God is good. And we just thank you for you and your family. Amen. For Charmaine for coming out taking the time out to come and give us this information. Amen. This is valuable information that we can use. And now, I know how to make the medication. Amen.